Blog Talk Radio. everything meets. Come here if you want to find me. Mind, senses, soul, eternity, all are here. Are you here? Enter the bowl of the vastness that is the heart. Listen to the song that is always resonating. Give it to yourself with total abandon. Quiet ecstasy is here. And a steady, regal sense of resting in a perfect spot. You, who are the embodiment of blessing. Once you know the way, the nature of attention will call you to return. Again and again, answer that call. And be saturated with knowing, I belong here. I am at home. Hello, everyone. This is Chrisom, and I'd like to welcome you uh, to this conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Uh, Today, uh, we opened with the Blessed Aum, but also with a short reading from the Radiance Sutras. And uh, I can't find a Radiant Sutra that does not agree with my Kundalini, so you'll be hearing them <laughs> throughout the year. Um, I would like to welcome my co-host, Amelia Tara. Hello, Amelia. Hello, Kristen. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> There's that time today again. Yeah, yeah. Hi, hi. Now, do you have any announcements you'd like to make at the beginning of the program? Sure, I'll make an announcement now. First of all, it's good to be here. I'm hearing an echo. Are you hearing it, Chris? No. Okay, I'll continue. So, Um, What I'd like to do is give everybody the website that they can go to if they would like to make a donation to support the Kundalini Awakening Systems Program and to support Chrism in the work that he does. The website has a donate button, and here is the address. It's www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And on the top right-hand side, you see the donate button, and it's very simple after that. Again, there's no pressure for anybody to donate, and you are invited to do so if you want to support the program, and if you are in a financial position to do so. It would be greatly appreciated, and thank you very much. I'll give you that address again, www dot ascension dash kundalini dot blogspot dot com. That's the only announcement I have to have. Very good, very good, my dear. Thank you for that announcement. And once again, as Amelia said, only uh, if you're able to do this, do not feel pressured to do this. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family first. Uh, with regards to taking care of yourself and and taking care of your kundalini. Um, equation I would like to give some other areas where you can get this uh, similar information and that would be uh, Chrisom the number zero Kundalini and so Chris it looks like Chrisom O Kundalini and that would be on the YouTube networks and then we have Kundalini Awakening Systems one at Yahoo groups on the 
Yahoo Network, as well as Kundalini Healing at Yahoo Groups. We have Kundalini Awakening Systems 1. Actually, I'm sorry. Kundalini Awakening Systems 2 on the Facebook group. Facebook network, we also have Kundalini Awakening! Exclamation Point, Kundalini Healing, and Chrisam Shaktipat all are on the Facebook network. And so if you uh, would like to to find out more information about what we do, you're welcome to go to those areas. And we have a new community uh, uh, on the it, – right now it's a virtual community online on the Facebook network. It's called uh, – Kundalini Radiance Community. And what this is about is uh, this is about a brick and mortar uh, about the Kundalini. So Kundalini Radiance. This is about those people who are inside of the Kundalini already or want to get that way or you know, maybe having some difficulties with their awakening. Some some people, you know, they have to go to a psych ward. Well, they wouldn't have to do that here. Here at this Kundalini Radiance community, Kundalini is accepted as a fact, not as an illness. It is It is accepted as a blessing, not as a curse. And so people would be able to come to this, community of kundalini radiance and uh, be able to be free in their experience with the kundalini uh, be able to be accepted by others who are having a, you know or, or have had very similar phenomena occur with them within their kundalini so this is really this would be a first on this world since the rishis as far as i know which you know i'm i'm just one person i don't know that much uh but the rishis back in ancient India, they focused on the Kundalini. Kundalini was very much a big part of their society. Well, here we are, you know, zoom up, you know, seven or 8,000 years, and here we are. And uh, we have the Kundalini, and, and those of us that have the Kundalini would like to have a society that recognizes the validation of the blessing that the kundalini is and the teachings that the kundalini has to offer and the and the sanctity of the soul evolution that the kundalini represents and so i would encourage everyone who is on facebook to to and who is interested in this type of thing we are looking for crowdsource funding we are looking for people that would like to live there we are looking for people that would like to visit there we are looking for uh, certain areas to have this done. Right now I'm looking at three areas, Ireland, Canada, and Northern California. And uh, we're ready to go with this. We even have a blueprint of a uh, of how the space can look. And I would like each one of them to have a very similar blueprint to each other so that we have familiarity no matter where we go to our kundalini communities on this world. So this is something that I'd like to discuss uh, today, but before we do that, I would like to bring Rosemary on, and I would like uh, her to give some announcements that she may have. Here we are. Hello, Rosemary. Hi there, Kristen. Thank you. So my announcement, of course, is that Eileen and I are working on uh, filling the seminar in September, September 27 and 28. And my contact information is rosemaryg at usinternet.com. And uh, do send me your questions, send me your interest, let me know, and I can send you further information. We have the place, we have it will be in the hotel. We have rooms available there for people um, staying, coming early. Even if you do, you can get the group rate. And... Um, have several people from this community who have expressed intentions to be there. So we're counting on that. And I'm doing my time um, out to different places showing the Kundalini film and meeting people. And uh, it's a very exciting thing to be doing here. I mean, it's, what, what, it's just amazing. What, what, are the, what are the dates again, Rosemary? September 27 and 28. 
9 to 5 Saturday and Sunday, and the reception in the evening on Friday before at 7 o'clock, I think. Very good, very good. Thank you. Thank you, my dear, for that announcement. And uh, and uh, we'll announce that again before the end of the program. Thank you. Okay. Putting you in the blue. Okay, so there's a few topics that I would like to <clears throat> to talk with you about with regards to uh, our, our, our Kundalini community in the making. Now, as you know, as many of you know, I typically don't ask payment for anything that I do. Um, uh, for the first time in many, many years, I asked for a assistance with a certain bill that had to do with uh, hosting the the Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com website, uh, and so I put that out there, and people really, really responded well. I must say, and so for everyone who even thought and 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 gave a positive intention towards that bill being paid, I want to say thank you, thank you very, very much. I'm very grateful for that. To see the support of this community, the support of of this microcosmic at the moment kundalini society that we are building, much like the rishis. I would like to say also thank you to those who were actually able to give a financial donation that allowed us to to pay that bill and to have the safeties and the other information on Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com continue into the internet. Uh, what a lot of you don't see is are the are the private emails that I get that are associated with that website and by far the majority I mean like 90% of the email I get uh, from that site is 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 of a of a grateful and thankful quality uh, grateful and thankful that oh my gosh this 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 is what I have and oh my gosh I guess I'm not crazy and oh my gosh maybe I won't have to you know, put myself in a psych ward or, oh, my gosh, you know, maybe I can begin to rebuild the reality of my life because at last, finally, I, I have some validation for the experience I'm having. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on about the uh, about how how positively that website has has affected people. And I would like to thank Glenn Ola uh, in Australia for for designing and maintaining that site and finding the hosting uh the hosting opportunity for that. And once again, I would like to thank all of you who sent positive intentions and and positive uh, financial donations to allow that to happen for another year. So once again, thank you very much uh, for, for the positivity of your love and, and the sanctity of the grace that you give through your intentions and your donations. So thank you very much for those. Um, I would also like to, to speak a bit about this community. Right now, we have it temporarily named the Kundalini Radiance Community, and I'm fine with that. Uh, it could also be the Kundalini Radiance Communities, uh, plural, because I know that the, the Kundalini, as it gives itself through me, is very recognizing of trinities. The three, six, and nine are very key uh, uh, numbers in a sacred equation that encompasses the kundalini awakening experience three six and nine if you if you look at the number nine it's a trinity of trinities okay nine being uh, you know a number of completion six being a number of knowledge and three being a number of awakening so there's a lot going on uh, with that and so when I when I said at the beginning of the program that I'm looking at uh, uh, starting three communities. Well, I'm actually looking at starting three communities in those different areas, uh, Canada being one, Ireland being another, and Northern California, or somewhere near the West Coast or on the West Coast being the third. Uh, right now we're looking at land. Uh, we've had the vision come that the, the land needs to be around 300 acres just to give the community a, an opportunity to expand and still have you know, arable land to grow uh, food on, uh, to have a well, to have some, some uh, you know, 
places for animals like goats or chickens or you know any of the types of animals that we would want to bring into the into the radiance of the kundalini but mostly for you know for fruits and vegetables and nuts and uh clean water you know and and the various uh plants uh, like miner's lettuce and and certain types of a pine and grass that uh, are also edible and that also would allow us to partake of the natural environment where these communities would be. I would like to, I, I, yeah, I welcome anybody who feels like calling in uh, and giving their opinion on this or relating any kind of an experience that they may have or are having uh, with the, their Kundalini Awakening experience. The number is 347 9340026 that's United States area code 3479340026 and uh, I'd like uh, her holiness Amelia Santara to come back into the studio and we'll have to wait for a moment here as she gathers up her things and oh my gosh there she is I need to check if um Yes, okay. Apparently, I did have an echo cousin, but I've moved away from the computer, and I can't hear it now, so I'm hoping it's okay. If um, Clement would just sound great. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. Okay. I'm ready to go, cousin. <laughs> there was an well, echo, but now it's fine. Christopher, are we, are there. Having, in, in... Can we ask the, uh, are there people on the uh, yeah, chat room? Or... Yeah, they've just told me that it's fine. Yeah, Christopher has just said it's fine. Christopher Clements is there, so. Christopher okay. Clements, hello. Hello, hello. Thank you for joining us today. Christopher was the very first person interested in the communities. As soon as they were uh, posted, he was he was there in like a flash and and I really feel that Christopher Clemens will be a, a a driving force behind this community effort and and I think we have enough interest. I really do. I think we have enough interest uh to begin to to bring this into fruition. Uh Kundalini is obviously behind it. There is no no question about that. Um so is the sound going well out into the chat room? Am I having vocal fluctuations? No, Chris, it's, it's going really well. You were um, okay all along, whereas I wasn't initially. Um, I'm not sure my announcements were heard, so I might make them again by the end of the show. Uh, okay. But now I'm fine. I'm coming through clear, apparently. And we have a nice group in the um, in the chat room, and so maybe I could just say to them if anybody has a question or they'd want to contribute in any way. Sashji says the sound is great. Christopher says it's perfect, and hello. <laughs> and there's quite a few people there. So if any of you want to contribute by typing um, a comment to Chrism, I'd be very happy to read it for him. And um, he will then communicate with you. Or you can also come out of the chat room and phone in at 347 nine three four zero zero two six and actually we have a call there chris and if you'd like to just take it all right i'm just going to take it hello caller this is chris how are you hello 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 four one five eight two seven hello Okay. <laughs> I okay. I, I put the person. Okay, Kristen. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not everyone All right. you want. I should have said hello first. <laughs> I apologies to the listener. <laughs> so, um, right. yeah, so, okay. We'll continue with the program. So the Kundalini Radiance community is really a a sacred place, a sacred temple, but it doesn't mean that it can't be fun. I know, you know, I my mother, uh, bless her heart, uh, would would force me to go to church when I was a, a child uh, because she felt that you know that kind of exposure to different people, different mannerisms, would give me a a greater uh, appreciation of what it was to be polite. In you know within the uh, 
you know, within different uh, social gatherings. And, and she was correct, and it did teach me how to be polite in church, but it also kind of gave me the whole attitude of, oh, my gosh, if it's sacred, if it's a temple, then it reminds me of church, and oh, how boring is that? You know, I never had an exciting time in church. It was always pretty boring for me. Um, you know, couldn't wait for the songs, couldn't hold still, couldn't sit still. You know, checking out the girls in the in the flock, I guess you'd call it the congregation, and just basically doing everything but listen to what was being said. And frankly, I have no problem with that at all. I think, <laughs> but I what I don't want to 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 put out there is that. Uh, these kundalini communities are boring. They're anything but boring. Kundalini is not a boring experience. And there are many, many fantastic, amazing, fun, exciting qualities uh, around the kundalini. I mean, just just being able to consciously astral project in order to find, say, something that is that would be for the kundalini. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give you a movie to reference. It's called The Green Forest. And it's an older movie, uh, but it, it, you know, it, it's very kundalini in the sense that, that uh, the community is using skills in order to benefit not just the individual, but the people, all of the people in the community. And in many respects, when you use these types of skill sets to benefit uh Everyone and everything, everyone and everything receives that benefit. Every Everything from the animals to the insects to the plants, the minerals, and the humans that, that also coexist. But it has to be as a quality of selfless service. But the one thing that the individual participating in, a, in an active format with the Cidic skills is that they get to experience what it is to be used by a psychic skill, not an entity, okay? Not an entity, not a spiritual consciousness, nothing other than the kundalini inside the person expressing through that person with a certain sacred skill. This can be very, very exciting. It's also a very clean environment to live in, a very natural environment to live in. It's, a, it's an environment that the very walls are saturated with kundalini the the shape of the buildings you know and hexagrams are are very very uh, productive uh, towards kundalini the 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 soil the water you know it's not chlorinated water it's uh you know these are very natural springs that we are looking at and already today i was looking at uh, property you know that has well developed water sources on it and uh and I will be continuing to look at those property. And in answer to, to Christopher's question about have I secured the land, no, Christopher, not yet. I have not secured the land. I've just been instructed to begin the process of selecting uh, three sites in three different countries. And in this case, it's the United States, Canada, and Ireland. Uh, if, if other people have certain sites, whether they're in Mexico or South America, Australia, Asia, Africa, India, uh, the Mediterranean, uh, you know, like, like where I was a little while ago, Bosnia or Croatia. If anybody is interested in also uh, opening up a center in any country or any uh, landmass on this world uh, with, with the ideas behind what we're stating with regards to this Radiance community, then I want you to get a hold of me because there is no restriction on where it comes up. Okay, there is, it doesn't have to be the United States, Canada, and Ireland. These are just the, the first sites that came up for me. It could be in Botswana, uh, uh, Japan, or the Soviet Union. Okay, and, and the obvious question is, well, does it have to be three? Well, no, it doesn't have to be three. But it can be three. And as I mentioned from the beginning of the show, there's a very, very uh, interesting level of information that comes through the sacred numbers three, six, and nine. And uh, three being the awakening, nine or six being the collection of information, and nine being 
the ascension or the completion of that process. Uh, so, so consider this, and consider what it is we are planning to do. There will have, there will be a well, there will be a spring uh, house, there will be chickens, there will be goats, there will be horses, there will be honeybees, birds. I mean, we're not going to use, you know, there'll be composting. There will be certain types of facilities that that are similar to what people are using right now, but don't have as much of a detrimental effect on the environment, okay? For a person to come there and to spend time there, say if you're living in Los Angeles or New York or um, Zurich, Switzerland, just to pick a a few cities, uh, you're used to living in an inner city environment. You're used to a level of waste. You're You're used to a level of, of ease of procurement of necessities, food, clothing, gasoline, etc. You're used to the facilities of a modern civilized life. And then when you come into a Kundalini Radiance community, well you're finding that that you know we're not necessarily using a lot of television. We're not necessarily using a lot of uh video games. We're not necessarily using a lot of uh, uh, of the modern conveniences that a person has come to expect. Certainly, some of those modern conveniences will be there, uh, but uh, you know we're going to be working from a solar, uh, a wind generation, and a hydro uh, electric power generation. And what I mean by hydro is I'm not going to build a dam. It's just you. what you do is you insert a water wheel, a tiny little water wheel, uh, along the banks of a creek or a spring. And as that water turns the wheel, well, so it turns a generator, and that generator uh, uh, makes the electricity that is, is stored in, in uh, a deep cycle batteries. Uh, one moment, please. Thank you. I had to sneeze here, so I may have to give it a blow in a second here. And uh, anyway, so as you come from a from a, a, a modern urban environment and you make that transition into a uh, a, a wilderness experience, um, excuse me. Thank you, my. Uh, we're being joined today by Laya, uh, another student of the Kundalini, who's visiting the ashram today. So uh, everybody say hello to what, Laya, and Laya, say hello to everyone. Hello. Excuse me. All right. So as you come into that type of, a, of, a, of an environment with the Kundalini, um, there's some transitions that need to be made. Some things um, you would need to to begin to really practice the safeties in earnest, depending upon your situation. Everybody's going to have a unique situation, but being out there in the middle of the wilderness, um, we'll have medical facilities, and of course, uh, uh, medical facilities will be you know within within reach. You know, if that were a, a necessity. But, uh, you know, you won't have the access that you would to the local liquor store or the local cafe or the local bus station, things of that nature. It's, it's a very silent, natural type of living arrangement. It, you know, from dusk to dawn, you're, you're kind of with the animals, um, you know, with the natural environment, you allow yourself to to change your circadic rhythms to match those of the natural environment. Um, it's very grounding. Uh, there's lots of opportunity for prana ingestion, prana collection, prana feeding. Um, it's very, very conducive to reaching into outward 
uh, from within and out of your kundalini awakening equation. It allows you the solitude, the peace, the validation, the, uh, the natural location of what it is to be a, a natural kundalini awakening individual. And then, you know, you can expand beyond that because as we are up in, in the mountainous areas, uh, we can begin to initiate chod experiences, that C-H-O with an umlaut D, and that's a Tibetan term for a certain type of surrendering to uh, the goddess and the kundalini and all that the uh, the shakti and the sacred feminine have to bring to and out of an individual who would be, uh, and, and I won't go into the sacred aspects of the chode, but uh, it's a very, very strong, very, very beautiful uh, experience for people. And so this is something that I would, I would like people to begin to consider. Nowhere in the world right now is it safe to have a kundalini awakening except in the privacy of your own experience in the privacy of uh, perhaps some some few couples like uh, John and Sigrid and Amelia and John see John seems to be somewhat of a standard operating name there <laughs> John so if you have a John in your life <laughs> um you know, there are blessed couples who who have the support of each other as they're inside of a kundalini awakening uh, equation, each one. And, you know, there is safety there. But inside of the broader context of uh, acceptance of kundalini and the, the enlightenment equation that it brings, there's not very much to be had, certainly not in the Western societies. And in the Eastern or the other societies, you know, for the most part, you have to become a, you know, a Hindu or you have to become a Muslim or you have to become a Christian or you have to become a Zoroastrian. You know, you have to become, you know, uh, some sort of a spirituality that perhaps, you know, you're not really being called to, but because they seem to have information about Kundalini, well, then there I go, right? Whether it's Buddhism or shamanism or whatever it is well what we're what we're suggesting is that no you come and you can have the kundalini you can have the freedom to express it you can have the freedom to nurture it you can have the freedom to live a kundalini life this is an option that is necessary and developing right now uh, so many people are having such a difficult time with their awakening process that these these sanctuaries need to be brought into place in this world at this time. Um, so Canada, Northern California, Ireland at the moment. Uh, crowdsourced funding, yes, a definite, because I'll tell you what, Procter & Gamble, Pfizer, Shell, BP, uh, Microsoft, Google, they're not going to support a Kundalini Awakening sanctuary. You know, I'm not, I'm not above asking them to to do that. But you know, typically they're, oh, you know, they'll they'll go right to the AMA. Isn't that that crazy Kundalini stuff that causes people such a problem? Oh yeah, it is. Okay, forget about funding that. Okay, so there's, you know, we we have certain hurdles within our society. Uh, when it comes to financing these types of projects, and so the way the way I understand it is that this is divinely sent, so it will be arranged to occur within a divine manifestation. If it is not of God and Goddess, if it is not of the divine, then I'm not interested in doing it. This isn't about self-aggrandizement. This isn't about, uh, you know, creating a, a community that becomes, you know, a financial pillar of the world. This is about creating a sanctuary where people can live with the Kundalini naturally, healthily, 
and happily. Living in balance with, with nature is also a part of the Kundalini equation. Being given the availability of just stepping outside barefoot to bare earth and grounding yourself there. How, you know, I don't, I, I'm not a person that likes to, to rip up wildlife. I don't cut trees. Okay. I would rather build the house around a tree than to cut the tree down, then build the house. Uh, this is just me. I understand that, you know, people have their different ideas, but, but, uh, I feel that it is important to join with nature rather than force uh, nature into transformation. Let let the nature evolve as you evolve and let let a partnership be given and a relationship be given between uh, the world of, of nature or the wild world, uh, you know, in regards to your kundalini and the wild transformation that you'll be having because of the kundalini balance of the outer and balance of the inner is very important and nature nature has has created a perfect model of balance for us if we look outside of our urban environment and we go into the natural areas nature has provided us with an example of how balance can be attained uh, it's different for each living organism but there are similarities, just like with the kundalini. You look at a, at a stalk of wheat or you look at a, a marigold flower. They both need sun. They both make seeds. They're both planted in the earth. And yet they express completely differently. So too is it with the kundalini and the people that, that she comes to, that she awakens into. And this doesn't have to be just a sanctuary for those who already have it naturally, although, of course, it is for them. But it's also for those who wish to seek it in a way that is non-chemical, non-drug-induced, uh, uh, very sacred, somewhat ceremonial, uh, information-based, and practice-based that allows you to, to go out and initiate a practice that allows the kundalini to come forward within you, the individual. Very important, very important. I mean, I have this ashram here right now by the grace of Francine and, and the grace of the divine. Uh, this, this little two-bedroom house, one-bathroom, two-bedroom house, you know, we've had up to, to like 10 people here at one time. <clears throat> and that one bathroom, let me tell you, it takes a hit. <laughs> you, have to, you, have to, you have to get the time clock going there. Um, this is the beginning, and this allowed KAS-1 to develop along the lines that it's been developing. But now I think it is time to expand. And Laya uh, received the vision uh, for its expansion through her practice of two things. She's practicing one half hour in front of a Sri Yantra. Now, what a Sri Yantra is, if you, if you want to go ahead and Google that, uh, Sri Yantra is a collection, well, it's a, it's a design, let's put it that way. It's a design that is uh, designed for visual meditation. Uh, unlocking that which is within by by uh, staring at that which is without. The, this is about a 10,000-year compression of information that is being given through a Sri Yantra. I would, I would uh, suggest anybody do this. I'll also suggest a movie. It's called The Last Mimsy, and that's spelled M-I-M-S-Y. And this is a very, uh, it's a family, it's, it, it, you know, it's a G-rated film, but unlike most G-rated films, it's interesting for adults as well. And this gives you also a very, very uh, uh, closer look at the manifestation possibilities of a Sri Yantra within a fictionalized, fictionalized context. But also, at the beginning and the end of the movie, it gives one the feeling of what a kundalini community would be like and so i'll suggest all of you watch that movie 
pay attention to the beginning and the end uh, with regards to Kundalini communities. Uh, remember, where there is no self-aggrandizement, where there is, you know, uh, very, very strong controls towards uh, <clears throat> surrendering to the Kundalini, surrendering to the divine as it expresses through the body via the Kundalini, some very, very interesting attributes can develop among a population of people living this way. So watch that movie and, and let, let it form some ideas in you. Let it form some possibilities within you because what you see in that movie is not as far-fetched as that movie might indicate. Not as far-fetched at all. People were doing far stranger and more fantastic things uh, in, you know, the third century Britain and, and, and further back. Okay. So this is not new to the world. It's only new to the Western industrialized, medicated world. Okay. And, you know, this is, this, you know, this is another reason why these communities are being considered was because of the law, the, the amount of people being, uh, admitted into a psych ward and in many cases self-admitted because they don't understand what is happening and they just want it to stop because it's strange it's it's not in their control and it's frightening to them and for those of you that have had the psych ward experience you know exactly what i'm talking about kundalini does not need to be shrouded by a chemical uh drug whether it's medically accepted chemical drug or not. Kundalini does not need to be attempted to be covered up or to be hurt or to be in any way uh, occluded from the visionary experience that that individual can have. And these communities would allow people to have the freedom to experience what their Kundalini is bringing forward to them. So if you have uh, a comment that you'd like to make about this, or, you know, an experience you'd like to discuss about your Kundalini Awakening Equation, give us a call at the United States Area Code 347-934-0026. 347-934-0026. Now, getting back to the Sri Yantra. The Sri Yantra is very important. You look at the most inner part of the picture and you st- some some of the pictures will have a little black dot in the middle of the the smallest area of the smallest triangle that is in the middle of the picture. Well, you just stare at that dot, and you let your eyes go soft, and you just accept the information that is coming into you, regardless of whether you are being given any idea of what that information is. It is a trigger. Point for your kundalini and your kundalini will tie in and harmonize with the information that's being given to you through staring at the Sri Yantra. Now, I have uh, Laya. Laya is staring into the Sri Yantra for no less than one half hour. And then she does a similar practice on her teacher for no less than one half hour, staring into the eyes of the teacher. Okay. And I'm gonna I'm gonna hand the uh the the iPad to Laya and just to to let her kind of describe in her own words what happens and how it feels. Well when I first started looking at the Sri Yantra, it was just I could see the center. And as time has progressed, it's like the whole picture congeals and comes together, but it's not. Uh, there's, it's a very busy picture. There's lots of, uh, lots of figures all around it, but yet when I started looking before, it was just like a triangle. Then it expanded out to a larger triangle, then it went to the circle, then it went to the figures came into the circle. 
sometimes when I get done looking at it, I can still see the circle and see the triangle. Um, and sometimes the triangles change and they become glowing blue or they're white or it's every day is different looking at the Sri Yantra. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and this just kind of gives you an idea of how uh, activity based the Sri Yantra Trataka can be. This type of a meditation is is uh, what I refer to as Trataka, that's T-R-A-T-A-K-A, Trataka, T-R-A-T-A-K-A. And and she she does the same Trataka with, with uh, the teacher's picture as well. And and those of you who are private students know what you're know what I'm talking about with that. Um, that mixed those two Trataka's uh mixed in with being here at the ashram, being a, you know, total freedom to have the Kundalini, total freedom to to express what the Kundalini wants to express through her has given a person such as Laya, a person who did not dream, had no recollection of dreams as far as she was concerned, was not dream at all. She's had a dream of a Kundalini nature every night, almost since from the beginning, since she's come here. And they've all been Kundalini dreams, not surprisingly. The type of experience she's having here is, is life-changing, absolutely life-changing. And this this is another reason for the communities to exist. The world needs kundalini enlightened people more more so than, than ever. <laughs> I'm sure everybody says that about the epoch that they live in with this world. But I really feel that there are a lot of people beginning to wake up with the kundalini now. A lot of interest. It is time for a lot of people to have this occur. And it is time for a community to be set up to allow as many people as possible to have this in a safe and sane and non-governmentally controlled environment. Okay. And by non-government, I mean that we don't need federal standards of community or of Kundalini awakening. You know, there should be no FDKA or FSKA. Okay. I'm happy with the government not recognizing Kundalini because, you know, we don't need their assistance with regards to that. Uh, and, of course, there would, you know, we'd have to have a legal standpoint, certain disclaimers, you know, medical disclaimers, psychiatric disclaimers for people that are coming in that have already uh, put themselves into a psych ward. Um, but, you know, this, because of what's occurring in our world at this time, it is very, very, very needed at this moment, I feel, to to bring these communities into existence. And so I really appreciate the enthusiasm and the assistance shown by by Eileen and, and Amelia and Christopher Clemens and Rosemary and and Fashji and and. and Julie and Steve, you know, Jay and, and all of these people who who are private students who are who are new friends who are interested who to begin to place these communities on the map. Place them on the map. I mean, it is time to have a Kundalini community come together. Not a not an ashram. Not looking at an ashram here. Not a place where you can't practice whatever religion that it is you like to practice, but a place where Kundalini itself is the governing factor. Kundalini itself. And we're not talking, you know, entities coming into a person and posing as Kundalini. And there will be, there will be, uh, 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 there will be put in place certain filtrations that can easily begin to uh, to discern the truth from the lie. Okay, the truth from the lie. And uh, and so, you know, with all of the transformation and all the, the, the kundalini that's coming to so many different people in our urban environments, let's give ourselves a natural place to honor the kundalini, 
to experience the kundalini, to bring about the kundalini awakening in an individual, to allow enlightenment to be experienced in a natural environment, as natural as human beings on the earth can be. I'm not saying we're walking around naked, you know, living in grass huts. Not that that's a bad thing. I'm just saying we're we're setting a, up a community that allows the kundalini to be present and accounted for and honored, nurtured, and and heard and listened to. Kind of like uh, if you've ever heard of, uh, if you've ever read Patricia Garfield's uh, book on lucid dreaming, uh, this, you know, part of this community would be uh, given towards uh, people being able to talk about their kundalini experience, just the way the the Senoi in Patricia Garfield's book would talk about, you know, well, what did you dream last night, everybody? What are the what are the dreams? And you know, as we're as we're in our kundalini community and we're all sitting around the table or sitting you know around whatever, you know, we can begin to talk about the dreams and. And let me give you an example of a kundalini style of a dream here. These are this this is what Laya dreamed last night. And Laya has given me permission to share this dream with you. So this is the dream of 52814. Out to the world, round and blue. What I like about Laya's kundalini is that it it gives it gives the dreams to her in a very poetic and yet very, very condensed and packed full of different meanings. And so the first line of her dream is, Out to the world, round and blue. Out to the world. Giving out to the world. Coming to the world. Uh, sending to the world, out to the world, round and blue. Round being an attribute of sacred femininity. Blue being an attribute of sacred masculinity. So out to the world, round and blue. Out to the world, join sacred male, sacred female. A gift to the world. Out to the world, round and blue. Many baskets sitting around, all are empty but one. Many baskets sitting around. Well, what what is a human body but a basket for energy, a basket for consciousness, a basket for divine expression? Many baskets sitting around, all are empty but one. That one had flowers. Well, if you follow the context of the basket being the body, one of those baskets has flowers blooming. And as you, if you look into the information from the Rishis and from the Buddhists and from the the Hindu, the top of the head is one big, huge flower. But the chakras can be seen as little, smaller flowers leading up to the bigger flower. And so this one basket has flowers. This one basket is a kundalini awakened individual. Okay? You have to remember, this came to a kundalini awakened individual or awakening individual. No feelings of happy or sadness. So out to the world, round and blue, many baskets sitting, all are empty but one. That one had flowers. No feelings of happy, happiness or sadness. Divinity does not have feelings of happiness or sadness. Divinity simply is. It is our ego, it is our emotional body that gives gives us expressions of happiness or sadness. Divinity uses the qualities of happiness or sadness to begin to teach us about our kundalini. 
uh, what the Kundalini may want us to do, what the Kundalini may not want us to do, allows us to be taught through the idea and through the experience of being happy about a certain thing or sad about a certain thing. It gives us emotional polarities to to begin to paint a picture on a five-sense human being uh, of, a, of a pattern of appropriate behavior. Uh, divinity uses the paint of, of the many different aspects of happiness or sadness that a person can experience. But when it shows itself, it will show itself without happiness and without sadness because divinity doesn't have to to express itself through the uh, through the mass of emotional or sensorial appreciation. Do you understand what I'm saying? Divinity is beyond the five senses, and so it doesn't necessarily ex- express itself, even to those within five sense paradigm, through five senses. It chooses how it will express itself through you, using your facility of happiness or sadness. So at this point, no feelings, happy or sad. Left all the baskets there. So when you when you see the basket as, as a parallel with a body, you're not necessarily trying to encourage everybody to become kundalini awakened the way you might be. That's not your job. Your job is to let divinity do its work upon you. And by your behaviors and by your uh, expression of the noble qualities of love and forgiveness and tolerance and patience, compassion, service towards others, service towards life, service towards the kundalini, service towards the divine, as you express those noble qualities, uh, the kundalini itself will affect change on those around you simply by that pattern of expression of the noble qualities being in your radiance, in the field of energy that is comprised of light and emotion and intention, feeling, sound, tility, all wrapped up into an energetic matrix that other people standing next to you can feel as is appropriate for them to feel. So we leave the other baskets there. We leave them to either experience kundalini as they can have it within their own kundalini process or to continue along a path of refinement. We leave the basket there that the flowers, the potential flowers in those other baskets that are currently empty will in time generate the beautiful blossoms of the Kundalini awakening in that individual. So out to the world, round and blue, many baskets sitting, all are empty, but one that had flowers. No feelings of happy or sad. Left all the baskets there. Time changed. World came red. Well, as I've mentioned in other programs, Kundalini is not dependent upon linear time streams. Kundalini bounces back between the here and now and the then and was and the there and what may be. Uh, it, It swims in the river of time like we would swim in a swimming pool or river or creek or the ocean. Kundalini takes lessons and allows us to feel the qualities of these lessons as as they pertain to us, regardless of the time stream it's taking these lessons from. Time changed and the world was red. So no longer is it blue, round and blue. Now it is red. It is the red of the first chakra, red of the earth, red of the force, of blood that pumps through our veins and holds the equivalent uh, mineral content seawater. 
In a way, we have red seawater that's flowing through our veins and oxygenating our cells and spreading the force of life, the force of prana, the force of kundalini divine into every one of our potential 17 trillion cells that would make up a general human being, adult human being. So the world was red. No baskets, but lots of flowers. Well, what does that mean in a kundalini dream context? No baskets, but lots of flowers. What is given to me by my kundalini right now is that the flowers of enlightenment do not simply reside within the human body. The flowers of, en- of enlightenment reside throughout all nature. Breathing in the prana, walking out into the natural environment with the meadow flowers and the meadow larks and the trees and the, the birds, the bees, the insects, the, the mammals. These are also flowers of enlightenment potential. These are also reflective of that which is within by being seen outside of the body, without baskets, without a body to come into. Okay, And yet at the same time, one can also see that as kundalini without the body, divinity without uh, needing to express through a, through a corporeal physical structure. Okay. There are many, many, many lessons, far too many lessons for me to take advantage of within the 58 minutes that I have left. But no baskets, but lots of flowers. So flowers. Kundalini without a body is everywhere. Everywhere. Even in the cities. Happy to see. Happy to see. So now you've gone from, uh, let me go back to the first page here, out out to the world round and blue, many baskets sitting around, all are empty but one. That one had flowers. No feelings of happy or sad. Left all the baskets there. Time changing world is red no baskets but lots of flowers happy to see now an emotion has been given into this teaching into this dream teaching happy to see it's happy to see it it brings joy it brings happiness to see all the flowers without baskets many changes noted picked up shiny rocks, could see swirling objects like galaxies inside them, evaluated them for a long time. So once again, we are on planet Shakti now. Uh, the, the, The world is red, and there are flowers everywhere. And there are many changes being noted, changes Uh, Remember, this is a kundalini woman who is having this. She's in awakening. She's about a year into it. So she sees many changes are being noted, not only within her, but outside of her as well. I won't even go into the personal changes that this person is having, but I will tell you that this person is undergoing monumental personal changes because of the kundalini. And this person picked up some rocks and could see swirling galaxies inside them. Swirling galaxies inside them. This is another teaching that shows that as we are within, so is it reflected outside of us. As those things are outside of us, so is it reflected inside of us. You can lift a finger and push a star. You can look into a rock and see the Milky Way. Everything is connected. It's just a level of perspective that is needed to change in order to appreciate to appreciate the level of connectedness we have at our fingertips in every rock of the soil, every leaf, every, every petal of the flower. 
A galaxy exists as within, so without, as without, so within. She evaluates them for a long time. And then clouds came in. And it became very foggy. Well, clouds come in. You can see the cloud as a veil, a veil against seeing. Kind of like a veil that we have when we come into the five sense continuum. We have a veil against knowing who the person was before the body was taken, what the karma was, what the history was, what the reason for coming into a physical, limited, five-sense body is. We come in and we accept, we accept a veil of forgetfulness. We accept the clouds and the fog of forgetfulness that we may live this life in true purity of our natural proclivities that have been given to us through our karma and through our previous lives and through the different levels and stages and phases of our spiritual evolution. Okay. So it becomes very foggy and the smell of dirt and blood is sensed. Dirt and blood. Shakti and Shakti. Dirt, the home of every seed is is planted in the dirt and blood, the blood of the red, the blood of the divine that courses through all things, all life. She, she, she smells the smell of dirt and blood. All is sensed to be okay. All is as it needs to be. All is sensed to be okay. Okay? Just wait. Be patient. Just wait and be patient of the next words that are written. No people around, no animals, just me, just the individual. Now it is dark. Now it is foggy and dark. And that doesn't necessarily give way to depression. That doesn't necessarily give way to to being afraid. Every seed is planted in the dark. Every human gestates in the dark. Dark is not evil. Dark is not bad. Dark is just the unknown. And this person, Laya, she didn't feel afraid. She said that the darkness was not fear evoking. It just was. It just it was part of the experience. These these types of dreams and even more detailed dreams uh, can be had by people that are in totally embracing the Kundalini, totally embracing it and surrendering themselves completely to it, to its teaching, to its, to its choices of a teacher for that individual. Laya didn't choose Chrism as a teacher. She had no choice. Kundalini chose Chrism as her teacher. I didn't choose to be Laya's teacher. That's the last thing I wanted to be. Kundalini chose me to be Laya's teacher, or Amelia's teacher, or Arlene's teacher, or Rosemary's teacher, or Steve's, or Fashi's. Anybody who is taking any kind of instruction from me, whether they, they acknowledge it publicly or not, It's the kundalini that decides. It's the kundalini that is the controlling aspect of anything that I do and anything that is given uh, for for a student of mine to practice. These communities will be about that type of, of interaction with the kundalini. Not necessarily all about Christian students, you know, People have their own teachers, their own gurus, and the teachers or gurus may not know, you know, a, a, you know, a, a grain of sand about the Kundalini, but that doesn't stop them from, from being, you know, teachers and gurus to those people who would them that way. Uh, but it is about taking the Kundalini on as a teacher, the Kundalini as it comes to you through, say, a practice of the. Sri Yantra or a practice of a, of a teacher, Trataka, that you may have and that you may be doing. 
I will rem- I will recommend the Sri Yant practice to everyone. Now, when you look up Trataka, T R A K A T A in in Google, it's going to point you towards a a practice of of staring at a candle flame. Well, no, 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 no. It's, that's just one practice of Trataka. I'm going to suggest a Sri Yantra practice of a Trataka. Okay. So you're staring at the Sri Yantra with relaxed eyes. You can blink when you need to blink. It's not like you're having a stare down with the Sri Yantra. Uh, make sure you look that up and you go into Google and try to get the, the, the older Tibetan version. It'll just be white and red. You'll just see that. Now, I, I have a, here at the, at the ashram, we have a very, very uh, beautiful Sri Yantra painted by the guy that did all the, uh, Sri Yantras in that movie, The Last Menzi. And it's a very powerful uh, picture of a Sri Yantra. And, um, I, I may try to get a picture of that and post that up on uh, on my page there on uh, Facebook and, and in the Yahoo groups. But uh, it's a very powerful practice. I will suggest that you start out with nine minutes. Start out with just nine minutes. Do it as the last thing you do before you go to sleep. The very last thing that you do. And don't be surprised if you begin to have kundalini dreams. Don't be surprised. Do this for that very purpose. You want to know what your kundalini wants from you? Do that practice. And then expand it to 12 minutes. Then expand it to 15 minutes. And then expand it to 18 minutes. Then expand it to 21 minutes. And then from 21, go to 30 and that's about enough. Now, what will happen sometimes, as what happened with Laya, is the Trataka, the, the, the Sri Yantra itself, will pull you into itself. And it may keep you there for as long as it wants. Uh, she was taken in there, I think her first time was about an hour, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was taken in for an hour. And it, she didn't even know. Okay, so if that happens to you, let that occur. It's okay. Uh, make sure that when you choose the Sri Yantra, that you don't have New Age people adding things to it. You know, people just love to take ownership of certain things. And I'm going to suggest that you just go with the basic Sri Yantra of a Tibetan version. So you'll see the red and the white triangles. Uh, you know, you don't need to see Merlin on one side. You don't need to see Ama on the other side. You don't need to see Yogananda. You don't need to see any of those people. Just the triangles. Let the triangles talk for the Kundalini in you. Now, if you have any questions about this, feel free to call in. The number is the area, uh, United States area code 347 934 347-934-0026. Uh, I've got about 46 minutes left in this, uh, in this uh, uh, conversation. So if you would like to join the conversation, please do call that number. Uh, uh, um, it looks like... Uh, we may have lost Amelia for the moment, so she won't be coming on. But So you can call in, and, and I'll take your call, and uh, we'll move it on from there. Uh, so, so, yeah, the Sri Yantra is effective. It's extremely effective. It will work for you. It may not work for you the way your ego would want it to work with you. And I'm just going to ask you to put your ego on hold. Take out any expectations of what the Sri Yantra Trataka meditation should do for you. Take it out and just allow what is to be. Do the practice. Stare at it. uh, Soften your gaze. The triangles will expand and they'll grow small and they'll expand and, you know, they'll do various things. Sometimes they'll spin Uh, Just let them do what they want to do. Try not to say anything uh, to yourself unless you have a teacher that has given you a mantra. And 
Uh, let me ask. Are you saying the mantra as you look at the Sri Yantra Laya? Sometimes. Some it's, sometimes it's she said. And it's, a, it's my focus. Yeah. So for Laya, she's using it as a as a way of focusing, keeping keeping the the, the kind of the corporeal mind busy, so that the visual uh, the visual can be focused on. So if you have a a mantra, uh, you could even say Om Namaha Shivaya Om, mm-hmm. uh, or if I've given you a special mantra such as I've given Eileen or Rosemary or Amelia. Uh, or any of the other private students, I believe uh, Julie has one, and and whenever I can uh, uh, Skype with Steve uh, J or or with Fasti, or you know, I'd like to give them a mantra as well. Uh, these are all surrender-based mantras, i.e., they are designed to create surrender and the the nurturing of surrender in the person. So this is very anti-ego, I must say. Um, if you've accepted Krishna as your private teacher, your personal teacher with regards to the Kundalini, then you'll be surrendering your ego authority to to that teacher. Uh, you'll be surrendering it to that teacher and to the Kundalini within. The, the Kundalini recognizes the importance of a corporeal teacher to augment, to augment, A-U-G-M-E-N-T, to augment, what the inner teacher, and in my opinion, my personal opinion, the the powerful, the most powerful teacher in a kundalini equation is the kundalini. It is the kundalini. The kundalini is what teaches. The kundalini is what I do. What happens to me is when I look at Laya or I look at Amelia or, or any any private student, I look at them through the eyes of my kundalini. I just happen to have that level of, of uh, it's just since I've had Kundalini since birth in this in this current life, it's so natural to me. It's just like breathing. And so when I look at Laya or I look at anybody that I'm even Skyping with or talking with you on the radio here, my Kundalini just goes and it knows exactly what to say, what to do, how to say it, and I'm able to to give that information, just as I'm giving it to you right now. And as I've said before in other programs, listen to the voice. Listen to the words. There are far more teachings being given within this vector of kundalini expression than I, as a corporeal being, can can expound upon in the very limited time frame that I'm given here. Listen to the voice. Listen to the words. Whether or not you agree with the concepts, whether or not your 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 ego is rearing up and going, oh, 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 he said surrender to him, that type of thing. Uh, regardless of what is getting in the way for you to accept your kundalini, if there is indeed anything getting in the way, listen to the words. Listen to that which rides the words, the timber of the voice. The information in the timber of the voice. Go ahead and look up timber. It's not what you yell when a tree is cut in the forest. It's, it's I believe it's spelled T-I-M-B-R-E. And it has to do with the quality of sound, the frequency of sound. Uh, listen to what the Kundalini is saying to that which is not of your ears. What is it saying to your heart? What is it saying to your spine? What is it saying to itself within you? I'll say that again. What is it saying to itself within you? You understand? The Kundalini knows itself. And that which is within you knows of itself within me, within Chrism. The only person that needs to catch up is the mental person, the emotional person, the psychological person. They need to catch up to what the soul and the kundalini already knows. So listen to the voice. And here, we'll do a few more of these here. Stand by.
Listen to that which is communicating to you through that sound, that frequency. Record that and loop it and listen to it over and over and over and join in with it. Join. Join with me. Join with my kundalini. Join with yourself. Join with your kundalini. Join the kundalini by working with the Sri Yantra and allow the kundalini to come through your dreams and don't let anyone interpret your kundalini dreams who does not have kundalini awakened within them. Join with us as we begin to bring these radiant communities together. Join with us as we work to to, to crowdsource the financing for these Radiance community, communities. Join with, with, with myself and Christopher Clements and Faschi and Steve and, 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 and his wife and Amelia and her husband and, and Laya and Rosemary and Eileen and all the other people uh, join with us to bring these communities into existence. Join with us. Come and meet us at a, at a seminar. Join with us at a seminar. Blend yourself with what is being given here, right now. Go back and listen to all of these other con- conversations, including the ones with really terrible technical problems. Even listen to those. Because as, as, you know, we don't start off running. We start off crawling. And sometimes we, even when we're crawling, we, we fall and we hit our chin. And then we're, we learn to, to walk. And sometimes when we walk, we also take a, take a fall. The evolution of these conversations is very much like the evolution of a kundalini awakening experience that anyone would have. You start out a bit shaky, but you get better and better and better and better. Time for us to give into the society of Kundalini awakening people, activated people, people that aren't even yet awakened or activated. We, it's time to give a place for them to have this, to hold this, to know this and experience this without being shamed or, or, or drugged, medicated into stupefaction, without being uh, criticized, without being told, that, oh, that's just your imagination, invalidated. It's time for people to have this experience in a safe and supportive environment. And this is what these communities can have. Very much like the John of God experience. You know, a person can come to these communities for just two weeks, just to stay there for two weeks, get a kundalini treatment, get get in, get the feet in the mud, get the soil in the hair, get the... I know, I know the women are going, what? Soil in the hair? What do you mean? But <laughs> get, get the natural environment into and upon the skin. Um... When you swim in a stream or a lake, the, the, the lake is sitting on soil. Soil leaches its properties into the water, maintain, maintaining its clarity. But when you swim in the ocean or you swim in a creek or a lake, you in the soil, in the hair too, just not to the degree of having mud caked on your hair, which is not a bad thing. I've done that myself. Come. Come together with us. Let us join together and create this community first inside of ourselves and secondarily outside of ourselves. Let that which is within help us to develop that which is without. 
as above, so below, as within, so without. Let this come into fruition. If it is at all within you, if you just come into a place where you feel that this would be a good expression of your kundalini uh, traits, your kundalini guidance, your kundalini gifts, if you've just come into a, a, a new setting for yourself, well, maybe this is something for you to begin to, to look at seriously. If your life has just taken huge changes because of the kundalini experience within you, and, and you're feeling yourself drawn to this, then embrace this. Don't resist. Don't set up all kinds of problems. Set up solutions. Be solution-minded rather than problem-minded. Get so used to describing what, why it cannot be. Instead, become, why, become associated with why it can be done, how it can be done. The problems are easy. The solutions to those problems require creativity and in this case, surrender to the divine within you. If you if you look at that group, and we have a Facebook group. I don't know if I mentioned it, but I'm going to mention it now. It's called Kundalini Radiance Community. And it is all about uh, these communities that that we need to see in coming into fruition upon this world. These radiance communities, not just for those in the States, not just for those in Canada, not just for those in Ireland, but everywhere, everywhere, as many as can be had, as many as the divine supports. Because once again, it is the divine that will be supporting these. It'll be our job to bring that divine support into actual uh, activity. You know, getting the land, putting the structures on the land, living in balance with the land, living in balance with the Kundalini within us and expressing that same balance, reflecting that same balance upon the environment outside of us so that we truly are the two that are one and the one that is two that are one that is two that are one that is two. Do you see what I'm saying? Become walking, talking, holy grails of divinity. This is a task that we can take or leave. But I don't see any divine, any kind of a divine mission or gift or task as something that I can just walk away from. If this has come to me, and it has come to me, but it hasn't come to me through me, except that it came to me a long time ago about this, but it came to me through a student. through a person that I have been given to help along the kundalini path. That makes it exceptionally important to me because this service I give with regards to even having students at all is once again an expression of the divine tasking me with these with these jobs to do, with these with these students to have and to teach and to have and to hold and to teach and to help. I can't walk away from a divine task, and I won't. And I want you to to look at yourself and consider this within yourself. Can you walk away from a divine task? Can you embrace a divine task with the thrill and the enthusiasm, the excitement of a new blossom, a new beautiful egregore of ecstasy? Can you do this? Think about it. 
And if you're interested, get on the Facebook, go over to uh, uh, Kundalini Radiance Community, KRC, and uh, join that community. Give me a little message there just to let you know, let me know that you heard this on the radio or, you know, this is something that you're really interested in doing. You know, give me a little message so I know you're not a spammer, spammers these days. Support this community if you're being divinely guided to do so. Whether it's in Ireland or Canada or California or wherever it may be, wherever you may be. Let's make these communities happen. Let's tie in to the crowdsource funding. Let's tie in. Let's spread the word. Let's get grants. Now, we have to become a nonprofit, I think, here, at least here in the States. I don't know about Canada or Ireland. But uh, we have to be a nonprofit, I think, in order to get certain types of money. Is that right, Santara, who, who has joined us again? Come on in, girl. Come on in. The water's warm. <laughs> Hi, good to be back. Um, yes, that's my understanding. It's certainly the understanding that I have here in Ireland. But from past connections, yes, I think, yeah, non-profit we, is important. Do we have a question from a, from a caller? Have I missed one? Oh, we have indeed just now. Do you want to just take it straight away, Prism? Let's just take it Is straight it away. There? Yeah. Okay. Good evening, Master C. Oh, the voice <laughs> of God. Hello. Hello, God. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Pastor? I, uh, I am quite well. I, I have enjoyed this talk so much. Um, I, I, I just wanted to... To about the the idea of Tritaka. Um, I, you know, I was taught this years ago, um, and I have found that gazing at a picture of the Master uh, also is, um, as opposed to Sri the Sri Yantra, uh, is also more uh, hiding for me. Uh, so uh, I, I thought that I would throw that in there. I absolutely love the new official picture of Sri <laughs> Sri Triple G Master C. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, okay. Let's talk about this a little bit. Uh, the first Trataka I was giving anybody was the Trataka of the healing picture, which is a picture of Pitsum. Mm-hmm. Take at a certain time with a certain frequency of Kundalini coming through his face. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was the first level of Trataka. She's doing that Trataka. She does that. She does it in addition to the. So she does a half hour with the Sri Yantra, then a half hour with the uh, with the uh, teacher Trataka, and this oh. this is what is is provoking such amazing. Visions. She's having visionary dreams. She's not just having. She dreamed of that outline of the community that I posted on the Kundalini Awakening exclamation point. Uh, that came right after that type of a practice. So when you do a half hour of the yantra and then a half hour of the of the teacher Chitaka, that is what is happening. And I'm sorry, I didn't make that very clear, did I? Well, I I wanted to make certain that it was <laughs> because I you know it is I have found in my practice that that has um, really supercharged or turbocharged my practice uh, is well, to the, 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 practice the, the, that the of, with the master. The kundalini, the kundalini in me knows the kundalini in you, and the kundalini <laughs> in you is the kundalini in me, and so yes. it's all yes. it's all one big happy party in my opinion. Well, I just wanted to make certain that it didn't go uh, didn't go unsaid, uh, so I will well, take my uh, talkative <laughs> self offline. Here, so. No, 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 don't, don't leave yet. Don't, don't leave okay. yet. Did you leave? Just stay, stay on. Oh, okay. Stay on. If you, if you can, you know, one of the reasons I don't say the teacher Chitaka so much is simply because not everybody who listens to this 
uh, agrees with, with what Kristen Kundalini is saying or, or agrees with with anything that I may be saying. And, and so I don't try to foist it or push it onto people so much. But but from your standpoint, uh, Bashi, can you perhaps describe to people if it's if it's you know, if, if you have the permission of your kundalini to do so, how the teacher Chitaka would affect you? Well, um, sure. Uh, it's like looking into a mirror uh, of the true self. Uh, when you practice the Chitaka, uh utilizing the an image of the master who has uh, obviously made tremendously more progress than uh, a measure of us, uh, what it does is it it, it sort of, uh, I wanted to say it, it resonates, it, it, it creates a resonance within you of this particular level of awareness. And it's just like a, a child learning to, to swim, Um when we practice this Chitaka, what we do is we absorb more and more of this level of divinity in us so that the mirror effect that I spoke about actually takes place. It, um, it, it heightens uh, your awareness, uh, your uh, ability to uh, be in a state of knowingness, uh, among a, a, a number of things, and um, I, jumps, I, jumps, as I jumps said, you a, uh, jumps you to a new level, right? Well, yeah, it sort of plugs you in um, and sort of uh, increases your your frequency, if you will. And um, I have found that um, it is a, a very, very important part of. Uh, any spiritual practice, as I said, I was doing it before, and you know I wasn't a part of this community until uh, maybe seven years ago, and then I started to do it then, and I started to realize that the more that we identify with that which we are seeking, uh, the more that we become that. Uh, I don't know if I'm I'm really making sense here. Um, yes, 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 you are. Keep going. Keep going. You're saying so, it well. <laughs> so as we start to do this and as we, we develop more and more into it, I used to make this a part of my whole med- meditation practice. I would do this prior to going into the meditation state, and I found that uh, invariably, it always took me into much more deeper and more refined states of consciousness uh, during that practice. And I, I must say that now my, my meditation practice is nowhere near what I used to consider meditation. Uh, it has gone into now um, soul or the true self yearns to to be a part of this state and uh, I am so grateful to you and the rest of the community for this beautiful experience that I have been uh, having and I thank you for allowing me to say it thank you Bashi, for saying it and, and, and I give thanks to you uh, for practicing these teachings and for bringing uh, into yourself that grace that is that is harmonizing with the Kundalini and 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 I really enjoy what you said that as you as you focus on that which you wish to become so do you become that which you are focusing on and as you're focusing on the Sri Yantra or the teacher the teacher's picture you begin to express and you are jumped or plugged in. Uh, to that level of radiance, and but I have to tell you, um, I don't I don't know uh, if you've experienced this, Fashi, but I know others have. As you're jumped into that greater level, that that greater level of energy, of knowledge, of of uh, experience with the Kundalini, so do the detoxifications also increase. Oh yes. And, 
Oh yeah. <laughs> for, for people, people need to know. <laughs> I often wonder, you know, if I walked into or touched the handle of a doorknob or something uh, that might have allowed me to to contract a, an illness, until I realize, as it subsides, that this is a bit of the cleansing uh, that takes place. Uh, as the Kundalini purifies more and more of the self. I want everybody to take take note of of, uh, of Vashji's voice and feel the Kundalini in his voice. Feel the Kundalini in the choices of the words that he uses. It's not just me that the Kundalini travels in the voice. It's also with Vashji and with other people as well. And uh, and and Fosche, I you know I I I really enjoy having you on the show because it's another uh, another aspect of the Kundalini, a completely unique and exciting uh, aspect of the Kundalini that that uh, people can also hear through your voice. So in a way, it's it's you are re- you are a reflection of that community. You are a reflection of this grace. And, and I'm going to ask Christopher Clements to call in, too. Christopher, yes. if you have the ability to call in, I'd like to, to, to have a little chat with you here on the air, uh, if you have that availability. The number is 347-934-0026. I will step away. Don't go anywhere. Okay. Don't go anywhere. Unless right. you have to go to the bathroom or something. No, no. As, as, as you wish. As you wish, Mr. Zero zero two six, and give us a call. No, I, I'm not quite finished with with the excellence that you're putting out there, uh, Fuzzy. Um, yeah, when you when you stare at the teacher's picture, you will become that which the teacher is radiating through that picture. Doesn't mean you become the teacher. Doesn't mean that that you take the power from the teacher. It's not no. power in a linear sense. Is it Shak uh, Pashchi? No, it is I not. Called, I almost called you Shakti. Did you? <laughs> oh, well, thank you. <laughs> That's a blessing. <laughs> that is a blessing. <laughs> so it's, it's no, not, it is not. Um, yeah. It is once we once we surrender to this this practice. Um, I think those thoughts tend to dissipate. And uh, and it's so po- important to know that, you know, the the master is the is the way shore. He, the, the teacher is, is is the guide. He leads or she leads you into these places where you realize things of your own accord. And yeah. that is the beauty. It's not. Uh, uh, master slave uh, uh, relationship. It is, it is the teacher, it is the way showers uh, relationship with 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 the, with the fellow traveler that has come into yeah. his sphere, the sphere, yeah. and actually taken part in in the, in the whole experience. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> I just wanted to add that in because it's so true. What you're saying is absolutely true, you know, and people in the States especially, people get really hung up on this whole master-slave thing. And, you know, I mean, if if you, if you were to say maestro, then they would think it's a symphony, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it's just it's just a level of programming that's occurred in this, in the, in the United States. I don't know, is it that way in Canada as well, Fasti? I I think that, because of the the history, someone was telling me once that the history of Canada and 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 the overall resonance of Canada is a bit higher than the states because they didn't take play, take part in the whole slavery uh, proce- uh, process, if you will. So their relationship with uh, other races, if you will, was different. And so I don't get that feeling. Once I step into Canada, I sort of feel like I've entered into um, 
one of the astral realms where things are a lot more uh, energetic and a lot freer. Uh, and, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I, it's just how, that's in my experience, that's all it is. No, uh, no, no, it's, I, think, I think it's, I think there's uh, certain levels of karma being yes. uh, balanced in the United States that has to do with the slavery uh, that is actually occurring in, in real time right now. Uh, which you know involves a lot of the race relations and things of that of that nature. So yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, thank you, Fashi. And I just want to say it's always good to hear your voice on this program. Don't you ever feel that 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 you're you're talking too much? Because in my opinion, you're not talking enough. Well, well I'll have to tell my ego that. Um. <laughs> I thank you, Master C. I do. I, I, I truly do. And I'm so pleased to be here and to be a part of this wonderful community. And when I say that, I'm being very sincere and being truthful from my heart that this is probably one of the most extraordinary places to be and one of the most extraordinary places to learn. And with that, I'm going to step away, uh, if you will allow me. Absolutely. Um, thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Chuck thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again. <laughs> bye bye. So there you have it. You know, um he's absolutely correct. It is it is uh it is true that you can receive through the teacher picture that which you may need to bring you to a greater level, a greater balance, a greater expression of Kundalini on this path. And then as we go into the uh, to the idea of Kundalini Radiance communities of a brick-and-mortar nature, uh, you can also do that by just being there around Kundalini Awakened and Kundalini Permission. You see, at these communities, Kundalini has total permission, total permission to to be with you, to be in you, to be around you. It doesn't mean that you're going to express it the same way as the person next door to you. No, because we come into this with different karma. We come into this with different levels of evolution. And so what one person may experience isn't necessarily what everybody will experience, but sometimes it is. Just as a, you know, the, 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 the flower and the tree are in the earth and the air and in the sun, there are some similarities. But that may be where it ends. But there are some similarities. And so as we, in, as we bring together a community into a brick-and-mortar status, a status that is reflective of kundalini upon the physical environment, these are the uh, uh, hexagrams that are houses, uh, hexagrams that are little sleeping accommodations, uh, even a, you know, a, a hexagram is a natural, uh, uh, a sacred shape, a sacred uh, design that is used by nature. Just look at the bees. A beehive is a is a, a community of hexagrams. And so, as we take our lessons from the Kundalini, we can see that the lesson that the Kundalini is teaching us through the the design of of our structures is right out of the natural world, right out of Right out of a beehive, so to speak, and uh, as you as you uh, look at some of the pictures that we posted on the Kundalini Awakening exclamation point group in the on the Facebook network and on the uh, Kundalini Radiance Community uh, group on on the Facebook network, and we'll spread it out to the other networks as well, so everybody can see it. Uh, as you see that, as you recognize that, as you realize that, know that. The design of these communities is taken right out of the natural world, even to the degree of the roadway going up, the pathway going up to the community is like a serpentine. It's like a snake. It's like a kundalini serpent that is going from the base chakra around all the chakras to the crown chakra, your crown, your jewel in your lotus. This is what this community is about. To have and to hold 
in a natural environment, the kundalini that wants to express itself in a natural environment. The natural environment, the first natural environment is you and your body, your basket. Okay? That's the first natural environment. We're trying to, to balance the equation by creating a natural environment within a community setting that allows the kundalini to express itself outside the same way it's expressing itself inside, rather than to having to fight traffic or to fight with a, uh, a, a society that doesn't recognize it except as an illness and seeks to medicate it at every opportunity, rather than you know, having to deal with uh, you know, uh, invalidation through, through the work through the uh, the programming that is you know can be so constant in society that uh, the only thing that is real is that which the five senses can interact with. Everything else is fantasy land and deserves a Prozac treatment. You know this is this is what we're trying to to create an option to be away from. You know. Not saying that the big cities don't have a lot of promise and don't have a lot of of uh, uh, gifts to offer a Kundalini awakening person. They do. They offer plenty of challenges. They offer plenty of opportunities to see outside of yourself what you don't want to see inside yourself. So in a way, it gives us a negative mirror, a mirror that says, okay, here is a list of things to not do. And that would be, you know, being racist or or being a thief or hurting other people or or being allowed you know allowing yourself to become a victim or to to not express yourself with yourself in an honest and true fashion these are the things that a, a city like New York or London or or you know Los Angeles or you know Tokyo or or Beijing or New Delhi or, you know, any, any of the really, really big cities that have a lot of issues, that have a lot of people in a survival situation, they'll teach you about their survival situation by the activities that go on around you, whether that be theft or rape or, or coming to the rescue of a person who may be encountering theft or rape. I mean, there are positive examples that a big city can teach a person as well. These kundalini communities are specifically for the honoring of the kundalini. Honoring of the kundalini. Do you understand? That's what these communities are about. Honoring the kundalini. Kundalini in you. Not an entity. And really not so much Christian kundalini either. It's not about me, the teacher. Sure, I'm, I am just one among many, many people that teach kundalini. At least they think they're teaching kundalini. I know where, where it is I'm coming from, and so I know what flows through me. And, and if you listen to, to Fasci or Amelia or Rosemary, even Eileen or Laya here, they know what is coming through here and what is happening here to be real and and uh, and verifiable kundalini just by virtue of the uh, of the symptoms that people are have when they come here when they stay within proximity to me and to they they sit in this chair I I regularly have the people the students that come here to sit in the chair where I've done most of my interviews and most of my meditation, and a lot of the kundalini is saturated in this chair. And, uh, you know, to sit there and to soak that up. With kundalini, you don't lose energy. You always gain. Whether your body can, can process that gain is a completely different story. Whether your ego is blocking the the uh, actualization of that energetic change within you is another story. In these communities, you won't need to block anything. Nothing. That's why they're here. I'd like to bring Her Holiness Santara 
on board again, but I know because it, I'm in California and she's in Ireland, there's a little bit of a time lag. So she's reaching. Hello, Santara. Hello, Chrissy. Did you have some announcements you'd like to make? Yeah. Um, I will make the announcement again about where people can go if they would like to make a donation to support Kundalini Awakening Systems and the work that Kundalini does. You can go to www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com and on the right hand side you will see the donate button. Again, if you didn't catch all of that address, just put in um, to a Google search Ascension Kundalini Blogspot and Prism's um, site Ascension Kundalini will come up. So that's www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And thank you for your support and for any donations that will be received if you're in a position to give them. And um, Prism, I missed quite a bit of the, uh, the show today because of technical difficulties on this side. But I did catch the beginning when you read out that, that lovely verse, um, the Radiant Sutra. And I remember you, there was a sentence about um, saturated with knowing I belong here. And it's just, it's been with me the whole time in the heart but that I belong with the community and I'm very excited and, you know, delighted to be part of this and to be, you know, positively moving towards making this an actuality and thank you, Leah, indeed, and Kundalini for this um this inspiration that's going on at this at this moment. And um I'm looking forward to connecting with everybody over on the Facebook group. Um what's it called again, Prism? Community uh, Kundalini Radiance Community. Community, yeah. So thank you. And I'll, I'll read. I'll read the sutra again. Here it comes. There is a space in the heart where everything meets. Come here if you want to find me. Mind, senses, soul, eternity, all are here. Are you here? Enter the bowl of the vastness that is the heart. Listen to the song that is always resonating. Give yourself to it with total abandon. Quiet ecstasy is here. And a steady, regal sense of resting in a perfect spot. You who are the embodiment of blessing, once you know the way, the nature of attention will call you to return. Again and again, answer that call and be saturated with knowing, I belong here. I am at home. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Talk with you next week.